find nth Fibonacci number. Let's find out how to answer this question in a technical interview. To begin with, let's first take a quick look at what Fibonacci series is. In the Fibonacci series, the first two numbers are 0 and 1. And then the next number is always the sum of the previous two numbers. So next number is 0 plus 1 equal to 1, then followed by 1 plus 1 equal to 2, and so on. For example, if you were given the input index as 7, then the output of your algorithm should be 13. In order for me to compute the value at index 7, I will actually have to compute the value at index 5 and 6 and then sum them up and return the result. So next, I would like to compute the value at index 6. In order for me to get the value at index 6, I will have to sum the values at index 4 and index 5. As you can see, I'm always moving backwards in my algorithm so that I can sum the previous two numbers to get the value at a given index. The problem is lending a recursive solution to itself. So, in order to get the Fibonacci number at index n, I will have to get the Fibonacci number at index n minus 1 and index n minus 2 and sum them up and return the result. So this is how the recursive solution will look like. I have the base condition in my recursive solution that if n is less than or equal to 1, then return n. Otherwise, get the Fibonacci at n minus 1 and get the Fibonacci at n minus 2, sum them up and return the result. The next thing that you need to know is the algorithmic complexity of this solution. The runtime complexity is actually exponential here. It's O of 2 to the power n. And the space complexity is O of n. If you look at the algorithm closely, you will notice that there is a lot of repeated work. That's why I drew this diagram to compute Fib5. As you can see how the Fib5 is computed by computing Fib4, Fib3, and so on. Notice, for example, Fib2. It's computed three times just the same value. The result is not going to change. It's going to be the same result every time, but the computer has to process it, has to compute it three different times. And imagine instead of Fib5, if the example was for some bigger number like Fib10 or Fib20 or Fib30, how many times Fib2 might have gotten computed? So this realization itself leads us to our next solution. If we were to store the value computed for a given index in some data structure and reuse it whenever we need it next time, that in itself can be a more efficient solution. So here is the program in which I'm storing all my results in a dictionary also known as hash map or hash table. To begin with, I add two values to my dictionary. At index 0, the value is 0, and at index 1, the value is 1. Next, I run a for loop from index 2 to n plus 1. And in this for loop, what I'm doing is, for each and every index, I'm computing the value and updating it in the dictionary. At the end, my dictionary will be filled from 0 to n, so I can return the value at the index n. Next, let's look at the algorithmic complexity of this solution. The time complexity is simply O of n, which is a huge win over the exponential time complexity of our previous solution. But there's space complexity as well, since we are using a dictionary data structure here, the space complexity here is O of n as well. So again, the next question will be, can we do better than this? So let's take a look at this solution again more closely. 
we are storing all the results from 0 to n. Do we really need all those results? The aim of our algorithm is to get the value at index n. So for that value, we just need the values at index n minus 1 and index n minus 2 and we can get rid of all the other values except n minus 1 and n minus 2. With that solution in mind, we can reduce our space complexity from O of n to simply O of 1, which will just need two values. So here is the solution in which we are keeping track of only three things. We are keeping track of the current, the previous, and the previous to previous value. We just simply run a for loop and make sure that the current value and the previous value and the previous to previous are set correctly. At the end, we just simply return the current value for a given index n. At this point, if you want, you can pause the video and take a look at the solution one more time. As we discussed, the time complexity of the solution is O of n and the space complexity is simply O of 1. I will provide the GitHub link to the full working solution in the video description. I do recommend that you please try it on your own before downloading the working solution. I hope you like this interview question. I will be adding more such interview questions to my YouTube channel. So please do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, happy coding.